This is Gail Morgan welcoming you to the Libertarian Counterpoint. Now, your host, James Just. Thank you for joining us today. We have Richard Fields in the middle, John Cameron down at the other end. And, all right, John, way to throw me off there at the first start of the, of the game. But speaking of throwing things off, FBI searched the home of Project Veritas, uh, uh, what? Thunder. Founder, James O'Keefe. Thank you there, uh, Richard. <laughs> you really did throw me for a loop there with those glasses there, John. And <laughs> they did a search on and apparently it's over some diary, Joe Biden's daughter's diary or something like that. I didn't actually read too much up on the story because I don't follow gossip. So what can well, you tell me about those, this? It's one of those stories where who knows who's telling the truth. According to uh, O'Keefe, he... His organization, Project Veritas, uh, and we should background on Project Veritas. They are the people who do undercover undercover videos or you know surreptitious videos, making uh, people look silly. Uh, they did one uh, on uh, uh, on Planned Parenthood, where they got Planned Parenthood people to uh, be you know utter very in, in, in incriminating statements about their practices regarding abortion and so forth. Uh, and but he, he does that sort of thing, particularly going after uh, people on the left. So you know he's a he's a uh, an independent journalist, but he's not part of the woke crowd to say the least. He is you know he works for conservatives. Or he he, uh, he uh, does conservative investigative journalism essentially, and of course he's not part of the mainstream media. So uh, anyway, he was approached. His organization was approached by somebody who claimed to have a diary that belonged to. Uh, Joe Biden's daughter, and uh, and that and the, the, the diary uh, supposedly had some some information on it that was not particularly flattering to her father. Now uh, O'Keefe says that somebody uh, came to him with the, with the diary. They weren't able to verify from, from a third party that it was in fact a diary, so they declined to do anything with it. Another uh, conservative conservative organization, however, did publish the diary. And now uh, started with the actually started with the the, the Trump administration, Bar Justice Department went after him, uh, and now the uh, the Biden Justice Department is going after O'Keefe on what is a state level crime, the the alleged uh, burglary uh, uh, theft of a diary. Now, and O'Keefe of course is saying it wasn't they didn't steal anything; uh, they were you know at, at most presented with stolen goods, which they declined. Uh, but, but you know, the, the, the question is whether or not the FBI, the Biden FBI, should be investigating uh, a, a person who uh, arguably uh, was in the position to do so, an expose on the Biden administration or the Biden candidate at the time and declined to do so. Hmm. And, that, and, it, and it gets, yeah, I, uh, well, my short answer to that, we can go into the next topic, next topic would be no. But I mean, if uh, if somebody else had a burgled diary uh, that they they didn't use and tried to give it back to the lawyer, or the the lawyer of the family that the burgled diary supposedly belonged to, uh, I don't think the FBI would be involved. So uh, you know, this is obviously uh, you know abuse of power. At, uh, at the federal level, why the you know attorney general for or whatever it is, the FBI for, for that jurisdiction should be involved uh, in, uh, I wonder how many other burglaries they're investigating uh, in, in New York. Second thing that's annoying about this, or maybe not annoying, kind of scary, depending on whether it was, it was done for spin, and we'll find out later, or whether it was a leak out of the FBI, is that this was a, supposedly a, a secret uh, warrant operation and uh, wasn't publicized or anything. But an hour after the warrant was served, a uh, New York Times reporter called, uh, you know, the people at uh, Veritas and said, uh, what do you have to say about this, uh, you know, uh, FBI agents uh, uh, searching your premises? So, you know, again, we have uh, we we have two different standards of conduct. And I'm not saying that the people on the right are any better than on the left, but, but with the, and certainly the, the deep state seems to protect those on the left much better than it does those on the right, with some exceptions. Um, 
and um, it's it's pretty obvious that 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 the uh, the people in the highest office in this country are using what are supposed to be independent uh, uh, police organizations, i.e., the FBI, uh, as you know their tools. So you know that's that's kind of worrying. I mean, if if you know this show goes out in Sacramento, but it's seen all over the world. Thank goodness. Um, but Veritas uh, uh, did a uh, uh, an expose on a Sacramento area uh, teacher, sort of where they secretly filmed him pretending to be very progressive and woke parents, asking him, you know, what he could do to you know, make their kid feel at home in their school. So, I mean, I, I think their, you know, their tactics are pretty sleazy, no sleazier than the, you know, than the tactics on the left, but there's a whole lot of worrisome stuff going on in this. Uh, and I think it's worth, you know, people looking at it and following. Yeah. yeah. The FBI are kind of rating investigative journalists, even if they're sleazy investigative journalists, you know, sleazy investigative journalists have a server purpose. Do they not? I mean, they yeah. used to, did they not used to do this? They called it consumer journalism, you know, where they go we, out. We used they, to have a, I can't remember his name, but we used to have a guy that was a fairly regular appearance, uh, made a fairly, a fairly regular appearance on Libertarian Counterpoint, who had a video camera, and his job, uh, self, you know, self-employed job was to uh, be an ambulance chaser. He chased ambulances, and he'd go to the scene of the crime or the scene of the accident or the scene of you know, whatever excitement was going on and get and get video and sell it to the local TV stations. The guy was kind of, you know, the guy was, you know, how can I say this? He was an opportunist at best uh, in, in what he did, but he was able to get news scoops where other people were not simply because he was willing to uh, chase the ambulance. Yeah. Yeah. And there's, there's, there's actually been a film, a movie about, a crew like that, an independent news crew that goes out and, and records events. And, and, you know, if you can get to the scene before local people get out the, uh, the local powers that we let be, that's my new phrase, powers that we let be, not powers that be, powers that we let be. Before the power, local powers that we let be, cover it up, sweep it under the rug, all the rest of that, yeah, you, you can find some interesting things. And, you know, whether it's sleazy or, you know, whatever, I mean, well, we'll, talk, we'll talk about some interesting sleazy things. Here's a topic for your heart. Um, police uh, helicopter surveillance data was unsecuredly stored and was released to the and so of course the hackers found it and released it to the public and it doesn't have just you know when they're over flying a crime scene or in a police chase. It literally has a bunch of people just hanging out in their backyards and their front yards, having a picnic, walking down the street. Just average people doing average thing. This data is unsecurely stored. Hmm. Now, what are these these same groups of people who are now investigating investigative journalists have will have also have access to helicopter data or now drones with the future of drones now that you can fly a drone much cheaper to fly a drone than a helicopter hmm. and much less obtrusive. Yeah. Well, I mean, the whole the whole all the technology they have, like the stingray, I didn't realize the stingray thing, which is a uh, police set up, in essence, a fake cell tower that signals go through. They don't even need to have a warrant to do that. They do it all the time. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, that to me, we're, we're, we're living in, you know, we're living in a police state. Um, and it's, uh, you know, we, we point our fingers at the Chinese and point our fingers at, you know, people in South America and all the rest of that stuff. And, and we have let the powers that we let be have way too much power and we need to rein them in. Um, but that, some of the things that came out in this story, I, don't remember, I think it was a wired story um, that 1.8 terabytes, which is a trillion bytes, right? Trillion bytes. Is that right, James? Yeah. Oh, the, the, I, it's something bytes. like that. Yeah, lots, the actual, lots of numbers. numbers. The actual that's numbers are weird. Day. Uh, yeah. And and from 2019, so um, and that was from primarily Dallas and Atlanta to bastions of individual liberties, and uh, um, this was just random stuff. Yes, they were uh, you know over over crowds that formed during riots. They were at crime scenes, but there's there's video of people just randomly walking about. Uh, there's video of people in line at. McDonald's. I mean, 
So, you know, it, it could be very well that these there was, were part of, you know, they were dispatched there because there was suspicious activity and the police asked for a, a, an eye in the sky. But if you're going to do that, then, and if it's part of an ongoing investigation, at least secure the data. Uh, and if it... If yeah, and, and, get a, and get a warrant. I mean, yeah, uh, no. the... the, the they probably just turn the camera on when they when the when the helicopter lifts off. They turn the the camera on. Don't turn it off until they land, and uh, don't bother to to secure whatever whatever they've uh, recorded. Yeah, I live I live by the American River, uh, and uh, you know there's always somebody you know going missing or somebody having a problem in a raft or whatever. And and we, and I live close enough to what you would call a bad area of town. Well, I'm sure you have helicopter activity all the time in your neighborhood, James, because the, the bummer about it is that in in uh, areas where there's lots of people in color and low income areas, uh, police helicopters basically are used to intimidate the populace by flying low overhead all day and night. And it happens. And and it's it's just wrong. You know, it's like driving a tank down the street. Oh, we're just driving the tank down the street. Yeah, what is the message that tank is sending as it goes down the street? You need to be aware because Big Brother's watching. But you know, there's 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 examples from years ago. I guess uh, a helicopter was taking uh, footage of a, uh, and this will just libertarians will love this. Apparently, there was a a group of people that got together for a kind of a midnight bicycle ride and didn't get a permit for it. So the helicopters flew overhead, this is in 2004, uh, taking picture of these people, I guess, so they could imprison them for bicycling without a permit. Um, but they managed to capture four minutes of a uh, film of uh, somebody with their really good infrared technology from 2004, it's much better nowadays, of people making love on, on the terrace of a penthouse. Why would anybody need to spend you know, four minutes focusing their freaking camera on that? So it's just, it's invasive. Uh, it shouldn't happen. Um, if, if they're going to use the, the, the stuff in, um, in relation to investigating a crime, what I want them to do is tag it to that crime. What I want them to do is get a warrant or if they, because it's uh, in hot pursuit, uh, eliminate every before and after, secure it. And if it's not used in the pursuit of that crime within X date, this would be a nice law to have. Usually I say get rid of laws, then delete it. Delete the stuff. Because they obviously can't keep it safe because 1.8 terabytes of it's now on the web. Yeah. yeah. And yes, John, I do. I live right across from the med center down here. So we get helicopter. We have so many helicopters around this neighborhood, we don't even notice them anymore. That's how many helicopters we get around here. And yeah. we also have open microphones. And the Stingray device gets constantly used in our neighborhood. We have issues with cell phone coverage around here because of the stingray device you can actually tell when it clicks your phone clicks over to the cell phone to the stingray device it, we just and the sad thing is we just kind of accept it because what else are you going to do well and yeah, you know, you can't really move because the same thing's going to happen wherever you move to and you have this shot isn't one of those shot um, towers one of those microphones is supposedly to identify gunfire somewhere in Close to your neighborhood? Yeah, yeah, they're all over my neighborhood, and they don't work. And, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're just expensive piece of equipment for them to play with. But yeah. speaking <laughs> speaking of expensive pieces of equipment to play with, um, the media is all upset over at a football player for lying. But that's not really what but what troubles me. What troubles me is that the it's over lying over his vaccination status, while they completely give Dr. Fauci a pass for his continued lying over masking and what vaccination effectiveness or even whether this the recent dust up with Rand Paul over the the NIH funding of of gain of function research which was blown up in the last couple of days this well, that, yeah the NIH uh, stuff I mean that's that's the NIH uh, 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 dumping on, on Fauci I mean I think Fauci is going to be the sacrificial lamb for the uh, for the establishment because he has been essentially outed lying to Congress. No question about it. He's there's absolutely there's there's no there's no gray in this. He, he uh, d defiantly and emphatically said the uh, U.S. government under his direction was not funding gain of function research on 
bat bombers at Wuhan. They were, the NIH has verified that they were, and he continues even now to lie about it. Uh, and then you've got the football player, and I don't follow football. I don't even, I hadn't even heard of this football player until you guys brought this story to my attention. Somebody, Green Bay, I guess, uh, quarterback said uh, that, uh, you know, I, I, I've, I'm immune to the virus, but what he really meant, or he was playing, you know, he, he was using sly language. What he really meant was that he had used some homeopathic remedy that he thinks makes him immune. And I'm not gonna get into the debate of whether homeopathy or the vaccine or anything else uh, is effective or not effective, but he was claiming something that was uh, obviously not common parlance. Uh, when people say they're, they, you know, they have immunity, what they're really, you know, in common parlance, that means, well, I either had the, had the disease or I've been vaccinated and he had not been vaccinated, but that's what he was leading people to believe by coming up with, with uh, you know, some sleight of hand language. Uh, and, I, you know, I, I salute the guy for not getting the vaccine. That's his choice, but he's trying to have it both ways. He's trying to be able to be quarterback and not get the vaccine. And the NFL is saying, you want to be quarterback, you got to get the vaccine. Now, whether the NFL is right, that's another question. Whether or not uh, the vaccine mandates are, are correct and uh, justified, another thing. But the quarterback was essentially trying to, uh, to have it both ways by being sly with language. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that, that brings the up the woke crowd is mad at him, but not mad at Fauci. Yeah. Well the, the, the woke crowd isn't mad at Fauci because Fauci was, was their darling for so long. And the reason they're mostly mad at at uh, at uh, uh, Aaron Rodgers is because uh, the minute this all broke, he said, Yeah, now I'm gonna be in the crosshairs of the woke crowd about this and you know, just gotta come out and say, here's what I was doing and here's why I did it. And he mentioned Joe Rogan as kind of a mentor. So everybody on the left despises Joe Rogan and thinks he's an idiot. And people on the right, some love him, some don't. And, and libertarians, those clear thinkers that we are, uh, he says some amazingly good stuff. And then he says some amazingly inter, uh, entertaining stuff. Uh, and, you know, I mean, he's a showman. Uh, but, you know, in, in, in a lot of respects, he's a good guy. And, and we can't discuss, unfortunately, dear viewers, we can't really discuss the ins and outs of the science because if we don't agree with the, with the um, deep state's position as, uh, as it was the minute this show airs, then we get in trouble. Now, just because something that we say becomes uh, um, um, the deep state's position a week from now, when they change their mind, as they often do, doesn't save us from being in trouble when we didn't follow whatever their whim was. But, you know, the, there are so many ins and outs to this. But the reason that, that people are so upset is that basically, as Richard said, he lied. You know, I mean, he, he lied in his choice of language. Uh, you know, he said he, he had immunity, he doesn't have immunity, even if the stuff he's taking works, what he has is some form of protection if he gets ill. You know, the, uh, I don't even, let me bring this up and see if you even want me to talk about it. One of the things that there's, I should, no, let me, let me send it out uh, for the next show, uh, a recent Lancet article on, uh, on uh, the amount of all this shit by uh, people who've been vaccinated and not vaccinated and see if we want to even talk about it. So I'll stop right there. And we got lots of good stuff to go on. But, you know, Fauci has had, uh, has had the bully pulpit and his, what he said um, has affected the lives, the livelihoods and the very lives of people uh, in this country. Uh, and, and around the, the world, by example. Around the world, by example. Hopefully they're not following it. Uh, the rest of the world seems to be actually following the science, not what they call the science. Unless you're in Australia or Austria or Germany either. Yeah. And and this guy, you know, Aaron Rodgers, you know, his his team is in the running to get a bye in the first round and football, football, football is very important. So it's just crazy who we give credence and who we spend intellectual and emotional energy on in this country and who we completely ignore. It's insane. That's what got me. It's, it's, that, it's that everybody's spend all this emotional energy getting upset with Aaron Rodgers, a football player, who's whether he plays or not, it really is not going to change anybody's life unless you're maybe a Packers fan. 
right? Or maybe a Bears fan and the Packers get happy because the Packers are terrible. You know, or, you're betting, kind of, or you're betting on the game. Yeah, that kind of thing. You know, but we're betters, and I don't care about betters. So it's a very but, small subset. Yes. Yeah, but it's a small people who've, whose lives will actually be altered by Aaron Rodgers lying to the public. But yet Fauci, who's lying to the public at the very least, destroys credi- government credibility in this thing, and no one cares. That's the part that gets me. And it's, you know, what do we do about it? I don't know, but it just. Ah, I just well, I, we're 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 putting a little sunshine on it, a little bit of transparency on it. That's the only thing that we can do while we can. Yeah. Well, there is a little bit of sunshine coming around, and a, a truck driver in New Jersey <laughs> is on the verge of upsetting the most second most powerful Democrat in the state. The Speaker of the House of New Jersey is currently losing by like two thousand votes. Even though I've just heard a, on a tweet that there's they just found some more votes somewhere, or something <laughs> I don't know. This whole thing's beginning to all very weird. But even if he ends up losing, even if they go through hound counting and ballots, or we you know how that goes, the fact that he was even close is should be sending strong messages that you know people don't like politicians right now. I mean, cause yeah, as well they should. I mean, he spent five grand on his campaign. Five grand. He spent one hundred fifty-three dollars on the primary. He spent about five grand on the on the regu- normal election, and he's within a hair's breadth, if not, to, of defeating the second most powerful person in New Jersey. That has to send an actual message. Hmm. Now, I think it sends a wonderful message that that for, well, first of all, he ran on a pretty simple platform. Our, our, basically, I think he's a truck driver. Right? Yeah. yeah. And he ran on the platform that aren't we getting tired of these rules that don't seem to make any sense and, and, and you know, we can't do our jobs and we can't raise our families and we can't send our kids to school and they have to wear masks and, and it's hard for me to do it. Tra- and if they put in this thing where all these people have to be vaccinated, we've already got not enough truck drivers, we're going to have even less and this has got to stop. We just need things to be looser. I think he used the word looser, didn't he? If, if I remember correctly. And that's what libertarians have been fighting for since libertarianism became whenever it became, which things need to be looser. And because people have seen the, the fallout from when we let these powers that we let be get away with all this crap, um, the, the tide is turning, and I think it's going to turn with a vengeance. Uh, I'm not saying I want Republicans to gain power because, quite frankly, I don't see any difference between them and the Democrats. But this, you know, spend until the economy collapses like a house of cards uh, for no real reason other than you're buying votes, you know, that's got to end. I mean, the voice of reason has to get there. And, and let's just have life a little, life a little looser. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's interesting. This guy was inspired to run for office the first time because he was not able to get a concealed carry permit. And this is in New Jersey. And New Jersey is not, you know, it's not Texas. It's not a, it's not a place where, uh, you know, gun rights are particularly uh, popular, you wouldn't think. But, uh, you know, he's a truck driver. So he has uh, presumably instances where uh, having a concealed carry permit would be, uh, you know, life saving. That's There's mm-hmm. a potential for that to happen. And the sheriff told him, "Don't even bother." When the sheriff said, "Don't even bother," he got he got he got uh, angry, and that's what inspired him to run for office in the first place. He ran for a couple of other offices before he finally decided to run uh, for this particular position uh, against the second most powerful person uh, in the state of New Jersey. And it looks like he's you know pretty good chance that he's going to win, uh, you know, unless they find some more you know. Uh, midnight delivered ballots, which is uh, par for the course uh, in, in places like New Jersey, but we'll see. Uh, but, you know, the, the guy is, is uh, you know, for all intents and purposes, a, a grassroots libertarian uh, from mm-hmm. everything I've heard him say. Now, I could be proven wrong. He could be like all politicians once elected, start doing, you know, things that I do not approve of, but we'll see. I agree. And that, that, that you brought up something, Rich, I know we've got some other ground to cover. But this whole permit process, the Supreme Court's going to uh, hear a pretty important case. Uh, they don't take Second Amendment cases, but they're going to take one. And and uh, if that it goes the way the pundits think, then all of these barriers to self-carry uh, around the country are going to get flushed down the toilet. I think there's only 18 states left that, uh, is it 18 states that 
that don't get in the way of people carrying concealed weapons or is 18 states left that do get in the way? I don't know the numbers, but there are a number of states where concealed carry is a, a shall issue as opposed to a may issue. New yeah. Jersey is obviously in the may issue. It's totally up to the to the whim of the uh, local powers that be, the sheriff or whoever. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, speaking of Supreme Courts and whims, real quick, um, the bite of, what is it, the Fifth Circuit, I believe, halted, put a temporary stay on the Baden vaccine mandates because of potentially grave constitutional issues, if I, if I get the phrasing correct on that one. Um, yeah, presumably guys, what the issue would be, I, I don't know, I haven't read the opinion or anything or what the what it actually says, but presumably the issue would be that OSHA doesn't have any power to be uh, writing these kinds of rules. Yeah, I guess the, the, the thing is that that OSHA's mandate is workplace safety. And the even though the uh, many people think this the, the COVID is a huge threat, it's a threat to public safety everywhere. So because it's a threat to public safety everywhere, not just in the workplace, then uh, OSHA has no mandate to act against something that is a uh, uh, a threat to public safety. They have, if it if COVID only occurred in businesses with more than 100 people, that'd be interesting, wouldn't it? Um, then, then they could probably, based upon their mandate, uh, do something about vaccination rules. But because the issue is it's pervasive, universal, then then OSHA has no business playing uh, fishing in that pond. That's the thinking, and that's what um, that's what the attorneys are going to do, and, you know. And unless uh, um, the Supreme Court, well, the, it's the Fifth Circuit case, so they're going to appeal it uh, to the Supreme Court. I guess they can't appeal, appeal it to the Fifth. Uh, and, you know, if the Supreme Court decides to take it, they might just kick it back and say, no, that law works and, and it'll be over. Or they might decide to take a look at it. It's going to be very interesting. Yeah, well, I think it's one of the interesting things on this uh, is the the question. They're not actually asking the question we want. Well, I'll answer it is, does the government actually have the right to determine what goes in, inside and your body or not? I mean, I think that's the fundamental question. But there is hope on the horizon. Um, I think 150 libertarian candidates won in just Pennsylvania alone over the over the last election. And I think that's some good news. There's yeah, and and I think Spike Cohen, who has been instrumental in going out uh, into the uh, uh, into the field and campaigning with all of these local uh, candidates, he, Spike Cohen, of course, was the libertarian vice presidential candidate in the 2020 election. Got to know Spike pretty well. He's a good guy. And uh, he is uh, doing libertarianism from the ground up. Uh, in working with local uh, grassroots candidates. And until the Libertarian Party is able to put together uh, a group of people like Jeff Hewitt and like all of the people who won in, the, in Pennsylvania and elsewhere uh, last Tuesday, uh, and these are uh, races like Constable, uh, those are the people, it's basically an elected law enforcement official, they're people like auditors, that's yep. all good news. And we, are, and we have got to see you next week. Thank you for joining us. And please remember to love everybody.